Okay, so next task number five, it's a summarization and route rejection. So we need to create a loopback 200 and 201 with the IP of 200.0.0.4 and 05 slash 32 on R5 and then advertise that to BGP. So let's first do that on R5. Loopback 200, 200.0.0.4 slash 32, 201. And then five. Okay, router BGP one hundred network four mass two five five and then two hundred dot five. Make sure it's in the routing table, and we can see that it's, uh, we can see them right here. Okay, next we need to configure R5 to advertise the smaller summary routes of these loopbacks. So that would be a dot four slash thirty one, two hundred zero zero dot four slash thirty one, and then we need to configure it on R1 and make sure it's a preferred path from the external network to reach to dot four, and make sure the R2 is a preferred path to dot five. So as you can see right here, we have the Loopback 200 201 being advertised from R5 as a summary route slash 31, but somehow R1 and R2 has to tell the rest of the network that it's a preferred route to uh, each of the subnet. Okay, and this is where the route injection comes in. So route injection, what it does is it's used to generate a more specific route from a more obscure route, aka a summary route, for you to gain a bit of control of the routing. So Obviously, once the route has been summarized, the information of more specific route has been lost. So we're going to kind of have to reintroduce that using the route injection features and the injected route. The condition is the injected route only has to be a part of the summary route. You cannot just arbitrarily inject any routes you want into the network using route injection. So what we're going to do is we're going to configure route injection in R1 and R2. So R1 we inject the dot four routes into the network, and R2 is going to inject a dot five into the network. So this is almost like a reverse of the aggregation. We're basically undoing the route aggregation here. All right. So the first thing that we need to do is to advertising a summary route out of R5. So we're already under the router BGP. So it's going to be aggregate 200.0.0.4.255. Two five four slash thirty one, and then we're gonna do summary only. Okay, and if we go all the way, so right now we are dealing with R five. If we go all the way up here to R six and see what's the R six perspective of the routes, doesn't look like R six is seeing that. Yes, let's go back to R five and do show IP BGP. So we got the summary routes right here. Okay, I think I know what happened from the previous test. If you do a route map, when we did the set metrics, we forgot to allow the rest of the route. So what we need to do, again, it's a little bit of a troubleshooting. So this already sequence uh, 10, we do sequence 20, and that's all you need, just to allow everything else to go out. And basically what we did earlier just to allow the loopback 100 summary routes to go out and we were accidentally blocking the rest of the uh, route there. Not a big deal, let's uh, fix it real quick. Permit 20. Okay. Clear IP BGP 16.123.4 Two, three, dot three. Okay, let's uh, try that on R6 one more time. There you go. Here's the rest of our routes. And one of those is the 200.0.0.4.31. So right there, a little bit of a, of a troubleshooting for you. So now currently the R6 is preferring R3 for everything. Basically, if you're trying to trace route from R6 to where there's dot four, dot five, it's just going to follow that summary routes. But we said that we're going to use the Route injection to make sure that R6 use R2 for the dot five. Okay, so we're going to start by configuring R1, and the concept of route injection is we're going to be, or well, we're going to have to condition based on the existence of the summary routes, and as long as that summary route is in the routing table, we're going to be injecting a more specific route. So we need to come up with a prefix list that match our summary routes, and that will be R5 loopback 200. 
sum. So we're going to call it and then permit dot four slash 31. Okay, and if that's true, or if that exists in the routing table, we're going to inject the router R5 back 200, and that will be 00.4 slash 32. Okay, what the route injection command also need is a next top of the summary routes that we are monitoring. So that would be R5 back 0, and you will see how this get puts together in a second here. Um, R5 loopback 0 is 0532. Okay, so first route map that we're going to create is for, we're going to call it exist, so that will be monitoring our, the existence of the R5 loopback 200 summary routes. So permit 10 and match IP address prefix list of the summary. So we monitor that routes and we also want to make sure that the the source of that route is coming from R5 loopback 0. Okay, and then we also have another route map called inject. So this is what the route is going to use to injecting a route. So match, actually it's going to be set IP address prefix list. So not match, but set. So we're setting the R5 loopback 200. Okay, so that will come together under the router BGP and the command that we need is BGP inject map. So what are we going to inject into the network? It's here route map called inject and what condition has to be met and that will be exist map called exist. I know that requires a little bit of configuration so for R2 let me bring up a notepad and let's see if I can just do a quick copy and paste from what we have on R1 already. Okay, so I need all these prefix lists and the inject and exist. Let me just copy that real quick. That we don't need, that we don't need. Okay. Yes, we need that. Delete that. Yep. So these are all we need. And then the BGP inject command. Just going to have to modify slightly since uh, we have different requirements for R2. Okay, but let's go back and complete R1, which is let's clear. For this detect effect, we have to clear the our BGP neighbor, hard clear it. So we have to take down the BGP session. When it comes back, we can do show IP BGP, and then there's a option for injected path. Okay, so injected path. There you go. It's still coming up. So obviously R1 has knowledge of the R5 summary route, uh, loop back 200 201, and that's why currently it's injecting 200 004 into right there. You got a greater than sign, which means that's the best path, and it should be injected right now. Okay, we'll come back and verify that in a sec, but for now we know that R1 is injecting that into the network. So now let's complete our configuration on R2. So we're going to need that instead of loopback 200, we're going to inject loopback 201, which is dot five, into the network by R2. So let me copy that and that, and that should basically be it. Let me copy all those paste that into R2, do clear IPVGP, hard clear, give it a second, and we're going to need show IPVGP inject. Okay, same thing, R2 is now injecting 200.005 into the network, so what we can do now is hop onto the other side, which is R3 and R4, just to do a quick verification. Show IPBGP and just look for something that's originated by the AS100. Okay, this is what this means with the regular expression. Dollar sign means it's a st uh, the end of the string, but since AS path go from left to right, left being the most recent, so the rightmost AS the number is the original Thomas system that injected the routes. As you can see right here, and we're currently seeing on R3, it's the 
slash 32 okay, coming from R1. So let's look at look for the same thing on R4, show IP BGP, reg, $100 sign. Okay, right there with the 200.005, so it gets reintroduced into the network by R2. So now if we go back to R6 and look for those routes again, if you recall before, R6 prefer R3 for the summary routes, but now that we have a more specific routes being injected, so you can see R6 is preferring R3 for a dot four and then preferring R4 for a dot five. So if you do a trace of 200.004, source lead back 10, you can see it goes from three to one to five. And then for dot five, it goes from four to two, somehow it goes across to one, but again to five. But that's the, the reason we go across to one, that's just the internal routing. Because remember, once it hits R2, all R2 knows is the summary route to R5, but that should be come across R1 though. So let's hop onto R2 real quick. So I'm kind of curious now what it looks like. So with the show IP BGP, actually I should have gone directly to R5. So to show IP route, five. So yeah, I'm not sure why it went to uh, the trace route show R1 in there. Okay, so if you have a trace route from R2, It does go to a uh, uh, one for some reason. Oh, it must have been the um, routing of the loop back then. Does it mean we have a link down there? Yep. So it's currently the reason why it went from R2 to R1 right now. I was supposed to go in directly to R5. That's because R2 is learning the R5 loop back zero from R1, which means that we potentially have a interface down uh, right there. Uh, which we do. I'll try, have to troubleshoot that later, but that's the reason why it went from R2 to R1 to R5. And that's complete our task number five. Now our final task number six, summarization with route filter. So we need to configure R4 to advertise only a summary route, so if it's leap back 10 through 12, and the summary route has to be the smallest possible and do not advertise the summary routes to R2. Okay, so we do not want R4 to advertise summary routes to R2, but it should advertise the summary route to R3 and R6. Again, this is just to demonstrate the fact that when you use the aggregate command, it doesn't really tie to a specific neighbors or a specific BGP session. Once you put that command in, the summary route gets advertised in all of the directions or to all of the neighbors. So what we need to do is to manually come up with a route filter from R4 to R2 to stop R4 from advertising that. Okay, so first, We've done this a couple times already with the aggregate uh, routes, our aggregate address. So 4400, 255.255.252.0, and that's the smallest it can get because we've got a 441, uh, 440, 441, 442. So that has to be slash 22. And we're just gonna do a summary only because the task said to advertise only a summary route. So we need to do a summary only. Okay, but as soon as you do that, R2 as well as R3 and 6 will be starting to get the summary route. So let's do show IP BGP regex something that's originated from AS400. See what's going on here. Let's see the summary route is already there. And if we do show IP BGP neighbor, let's advertise. Oh, sorry, it's a dot two. Okay, so it should be advertising that to dot two with the AS of, oh, sorry, not 400, 300. That's why it's not showing up. So 300, there you go. So a single route is coming from uh, R4 now. It's a summary route, but we want to stop that from being advertised. So on R4, you have to come up with a 
I mean, there's a number of ways that you can perform a route filter. You can do a prefix list command, or you can do a route map command. Um, first, we're just going to do a route map, but we still need to create a prefix list or a access list. Let's just do prefix list. So we'll call it R4 Allo sum permit 4400 slash 22. And that's just to match the route right here. And route map to AS. Hang on, let me go back to the task again. Okay, so do not advertise that to R2. So it means we're going to have to create an AS100. Uh, we're actually going to call it to R2. Deny 5. And then match IP address prefix list. Copy paste. Make sure you still allow everything else. Don't make that mistake again that we did earlier. It's not allowing the rest of the routes. So permit with the router BGP 300 neighbor dot four route map uh, two R2 out. Uh, keep putting R4 for that. It should be R2. There you go. Do clear IP BGP dot one two three dot two out. Show IP prefix list detail just to check if there's a hit and there is. That means if you jump back to R2, you can see before the route was being learned directly from R4, but now it's being learned through R1. So now if you do a trace route to 4401, sourcing from loopback 10 from R2, you can see it takes a longer route, which is 1, 3, and then 4, which is from R2, we'll go to 1, Three and then across to four, and that's because R2 doesn't know how to get to R4 loopbacks anymore across that direct uh, eBGP session. All right, and that's complete our final test of the summarization with route filter. Well, wow, so we've gone through quite a bit in this lab. As you can see, there's there's a lot that we can do with the route summarization in BGP, and you can see how you can easily get overwhelmed with all these commands. All right, so that wraps up our video with BGP route summarization. You can visit our website to view an extensive list of our lab videos and sign up to get access to additional lab contents. Thank you for watching labnits.com and I'll see you guys in the next BGP videos.